came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israel. And there was a cloud and darkness to them. But he gave light by the night to these, so that the one came not near the other all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea look dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters a wall unto them on the right hand and on their left. Amen. Amen. We're in that question for we start our discussion. Okay, let's just bring us up to today's lesson. All right. Now, as you recall, a lot of things that happened in the Yeah, a lot. And it has been no doubt a week since they left pregnancy. Okay. I guess I'm putting that that way. And a journey that should have taken something like two or three days. But it took a whole week because God led them around the Philistines yep. so that they would not be afraid of war. Exactly. And he brought them uh, to Ephraim where they are now. Okay? And can you imagine them Standing there by the Red Sea and hearing all this noise, let me run something down to you. According to a lot of writers, there were 600 chariots. Now get the man, 600 chariots. And each chariot has two people on it. So that's 1,200 men right there. Right. Okay? And the writer said that was 50,000 horsemen, Woo. people riding on horses, Woo. okay? And 200,000 on feet, oh. walking. Can you imagine hearing all this noise coming behind you? And <laughs> the effect upon the children of Israel was they were afraid. Terrified. They were terrified. You know, sometimes we uh, we have our problem, sickness, death in the family, and then we lose sight on what God has done and what we ought to believe Him to do. Amen. Listen, God had performed all He played. And they have seen all of this. Okay? I will. They should have realized that it's the same God. We ought to realize when we get into our problems and remember how God had delivered me. Amen. I know you teach you how. He delivered me. Yes, he has. Yes, I will yes. never forget. Right. I don't care how many problems I have. I know God is able yes, he is. to deliver me. So there was a friend. And they call out to God. Well, that's one good thing we can do. We call out to God. Yeah. Don't forget. They said in this text, they said they cried out. They so cried out. I don't know what they were saying. <laughs> they writers don't say what they were saying, but they cried out. They cried out. They cried out to God. And then, number two, they complained. Yes. That's complaint number two. Yes. And throughout Israel's history, they had something like about 12 complaints before they got close to the promised land. The first complaint came about, remember, you remember when Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, God said, let my people go so they can come to this mountain and worship me. Pharaoh said, if they got time to do that, let them get their own strong. Right, exactly. Now you remember that? Yeah, now you have to go get the old uh, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go and worship? Yeah. So you're going to get produce the same amount, but you're going to get your own story. And so they told 
the leadership came to Moses and said, leave us alone. Leave us alone. Let us serve in here. Right. You know, You're making matters worse. That's right. Leave me alone. Let me go on back out there and do what I was doing before I came in here. Oh, let me get that. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me continue my own way. Right? Yeah, let me do my own thing. Yeah, right. See your father, the spirit was making it hard on us, and so they complained to Moses, saying, "We're not no brave in Egypt. You know, we must not go back to Egypt." Right. And I know I'm saying it's out here. You go in a minute. He'll <laughs> <laughs> go back to Egypt. He'll go back to Egypt in a minute. And I determined that I'm not going back to Egypt. All right. All right. Okay, any questions so far? Well, my first comment, Pastor, is uh, the fear factor that the Israelites were feeling when they realized that they were out in the wilderness. And you described the sounds of the horses and the chariots right. coming down on them, and they were all terrified. Definitely. And that sounds just like us when we get in our predicaments, that we don't forget about all the things God has delivered us from, because Amen. now all we're focusing in on is what's happening right now before us. Amen. Amen. Sure. Yeah, man. And to piggyback on that, they were willing to settle and go back and work with Pharaoh rather than Trust the guys that he was going to lead them to where they need to be. Right. And I think all too often we get in a situation where things are not working out for us, right. so we just settle. Right. Whatever happens. You're right. See, in all of our problems day to day, we have to stay focused mm -hmm. on God. Amen. And it's so easy to lose our focus. It sure is. So many things. That. That will cause us to lose our focus. Get distracted, yeah. You got to remember what God has done. Oh, yeah. And I know that everybody in here, God has done something for you. Yes, He has. Boy, He brought me a mighty long way from my pit. Right. So don't forget, when you, when you get into a type, just say, God is able yes. to deliver me. Okay? Now, the Israelites and Pharaoh thought that God had forsaken his people. Yep. He brought them out here, <laughs> and there's a mountain, that's what the song said, there's a mountain on each side, yeah. Yeah. and there's a Red Sea ahead of them, and there's this great host closing in on all this noise of these chariots and horsemen, and they say, well, God has forsaken them. But let's think about it. If God had forsaken them, then the covenant that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would have been none effect. You're right. God is not going to go back on his promise. That's the key, right? They should have realized that God is true to his word, and he promised them a land that flows with milk and honey. Right, right. He is going to be delivered. Okay. Yes. You know, I was saying this. Like you said, uh, God had promised them that. But now, put yourself in that situation. Everything closing in on you like it was closing in on you. Like it was. Yeah, it was a lot of fright there. And it, that was a, also another teachable moment for God. Right. God had a chance to let them know, uh, teach them. Right. Whatever he said, the word he, you know, he would do. But at that moment, they were scared to death. <laughs> so, they, you know, I can understand, hey, what am I going to do? All these men coming at us, what do we have to fight with? So, yeah, I can understand him being afraid. And I think all of us will be the same way. <laughs> yeah, when you keep your mind stayed on God, yes. you know, don't let your problem take your mind off of God. Yeah. Okay, yeah, one of the practical points in the lesson, it says, fear is a natural response to danger. We all 
can have that natural response of like being fearful when it's dangerous around you. But then it says, but faith is the spiritual solution, mm -hmm. which is what you're talking about, is the keeping our focus on God. Then we know that no matter what the situation or the problem we're facing, it's not too big for our God. Right. And we need to keep our spiritual focus and our faith in God, even at the worst of times, when it looks like there's no hope. Yeah, don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Keep your faith in God. Now, Moses became a prophet. He prophesied that you won't see God's salvation. He prophesied that you will not see the Egyptian again, but what he meant not alive anyway. <laughs> right. Because the Bible said they saw him laying on the shore, dead. They didn't see him alive. And he also said, and I believe this in all my heart, God will fight your battle for you. Thank you. Thank you. If you just keep still. That's right. Moses said to the people, stand still. Yep. And see the salvation of God. Now, after you have done everything you can do, okay. after you have gone to your limit, then you can rely on God. That's when he'll take over and do his part. There you go. Let's teach you. Stand still, Moses said, and see the salvation right. of God. We need to stand still and hear what God commands us. We are, sometimes we're too busy. What about all our care and things? We need to just stand still and see what the Lord is telling us to do with this. But Pastor, let me ask yes. you. Yes. I'm, I'm not trying to be facetious, sir. But because we are emotional beings, our emotions sometimes and our feelings cause us to focus on the moment. And we get caught up in the moment. We can't rationally reason uh, what we need to do when we're caught up in that moment. Yeah. And that's why so many times we make very fatal choices and decisions in the moment. If we're not prepared for the moment, Amen. then we're going to end up making some very critical, bad choices. Okay. Anybody else? Well, you know, I put myself in the Israelite position. Joe and I was going to stop, and I was driving. Joe was reading the Bible and everything. We got through reading the Bible there. Let's do spiritual music. I think I told Joe to do something anyway. But anyway, we was going around this curve. I hit an ice spot. When I hit that ice spot, the car did like this. I looked over, and there was a semi right here. All I could do is, the Lord have mercy, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> now, the Israelites, yeah. when they saw that, all the Lord have mercy. You know what I mean? That's where I was set. You so cried out. I can put myself in the Israelite position here. You know, I hit that wall. Bam! Yeah. And then when them bags came out, I thought that was the end. Amen. Because when them bags exploded, you had fire shooting and everything. That's right, I knew that. And that scared me to death. But Lord took care, the good Lord took care. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, the rest of that is the Lord building the tribe. Lord the tribe. Lord the tribe. I looked back and looked at all I could see was a big angel.
Yeah. Ohio all the way over. Yeah, it too. Well, Michigan, it, it was just a man. It shut down everything. Yeah, I was in an accident. Same way out of South Dakota. Ooh. Hit an ice spot. I don't know how many times that man didn't turn over. I didn't get scratched. That's God. Amen. Nobody Amen. got scratched. Yeah. <laughs> then I was hit downtown there. The only scratch I got, the airbag burnt my hand when it come out. I knew I hate the airbag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so we see that the Israelites had a lapse of memory. We see that in the lesson today. And they thought God had forsaken them. But just think, God is so good. He uses the thing that He creates to show us His power. And He created a cloud. And, and, and the cloud <coughs> on one side is dark. Right, right. He gets you because. And on the other side is light. Yeah. And that cloud remains. All night. Yep. Okay, so that's the power of God. Supernatural. Okay? So we know that God will take care of us if only we could trust in Him. He will surely take care of us. And look what He did. He guided the Israelites. And the scripture said that He was a pillow of cloud by day and a pillow of fire by night right. to get them where they are. So he guided them. Why can't you see that? <laughs> he spoke to Moses. He told Moses to stretch out the rod. First of all, he said, go forward. You know, I'm looking at all this water, and these mountains. Where am I going? Where can I go? Right. <laughs> you got to have enough faith to trust God to move out in that water. Alright? That's what he said. Tell him to go forward. He, again, he tells us that I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. Mm -hmm. See? He intentionally yes, made it so Pharaoh would be determined to destroy yep. or take back the children of Israel. Okay? So that's what he can tell me. Now, okay, now we're at the water. He tells Moses, he tells Moses, stop crying to me and do something. Right. You know, sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm one for prayer, but sometimes we have to get up and do something. Right? And do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all right to cry to God, it's all right to ask him for something. But sometimes we have to do something on our own. So he said to Moses, use what you have. Stretch forth the rod. Yeah. Moses stretched the rod. He called the east wind to blow all night long and divide the water. Yeah. That's a mighty, mighty for us to win. Ooh, that's, that's, that he called. That's unusual. Really. Now I want to tell you something. The rod didn't do it. No, it's got no. I remember later on in Israel history, they ran into some poison water. You know, the scripture said it's bitter. And they could not drink it. But God told Moses to get a brush and stir in the water. When he did that, the water became pure and drank. It wasn't a brush. It was the power of God. Amen. Another incident, Elisha was building a seminar for his student. And one of the young men had a bar of axe. Y'all know the story. And the hell, the axe came off the handle. You ever been? I have done it. Have you ever been that way? Oh, no, yeah. The axe came off the handle and fell in the water. And he told him, I bartered that axe. So Elisha got a stick and stirred it in the water. 
and it had floated up on the top. <laughs> it wasn't a stick. No, it was power of God. Power of God. Yes. Wow. Whatever, whenever we need God, He shows forth His power. He uses the thing that He created to show His power. Okay, now, He had to harden all these soldiers. He had to harden that hard too. Because if they come in there and see all of this miracle, this water dividing, they were going to get scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he hardened their hearts so they would still chase after the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And that, we all know what happened after that. So, question, comment. There, there's also the first two plagues that affected the Israelites and it just had to do with the rock. That's right. And Moses used the rod in those uh, two instances, in those two plagues, to display <laughs> God's power there. So again, he goes all the way past the other plagues, and now again he finds Moses at the Red Sea, and he's using the rod again. That's right. And the Red Sea is the biggest mass of water that he has to deal with to perform the last bit right. to get right. him out of there. Right. Yes, ma'am. He also had to do things through Moses so the people will uh, believe. God got the power. You see, all of the plagues that God did over it, all these Egyptians were to show who he was, right. to show I'm God. All I'm going to get me the glory. Yeah. And God allows a lot of things to happen in our life just to remind us mm -hmm. that he's in charge. Right. Mm -hmm. He's our boss. And he's going to take care of us. If only we could trust in him and keep our minds stayed on him, Joe. You know? My daughter, she was in school in Erie, Pennsylvania. And she had left going to work where they, she was in training. So she didn't have all the proper clothes on when she left because it wasn't snowing or anything. It, it started snowing, and when she got out, she didn't have her shoes, she didn't have, you know, she had on tennis shoes, and it was so cold, a little cold, she, but she got clothes, but she didn't have them on. And she said, Mama, I was just walking and praying and crying. I said, Lord, please send me a bus. Do you know a bus came? She got on the bus. The bus came, took her home, let her off in front of the house where she lived. And so she asked the lady, did the bus ever come down the street? She said, no. I started crying, and she told me, and I said, well, nothing but God took care of my child. Yes. And she believed it, and it just helped her faith more and more. Amen. And I just told her. Amen. Yeah, it's like in this situation, God put them up against the Red Sea where there was no way out. No way out. And the Egyptians, they thought they had them for sure because they had nowhere to, to, to run to. Yeah. And so God basically hardened their hearts in order to make the Egyptians feel that they could take them out Right. So God again could show up and show that he was really the one that had all the power and he was like you said get the honor and the glory and there'd be no doubt in anybody's mind who God was. He said, yeah, mm -hmm. this is the final show. He said, I'm going to make sure there's no this way. time uh, there's no way out. There's no way out. You know, the question, and a lot of people still ask this question, did Pharaoh get grounded too? You had your hand up God will never leave you nor forsake you. He right. promised that. Right. 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 He will never leave you. More, more than one time. In the okay. Bible. That's right. Pastor, you have any? Boy, I got quite a few of them. <laughs> 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 you get hey, but you start, <laughs> Reverend Sam, been waiting. You, you uh, mentioned something just before we, you know, Mike was talking up about okay. Pharaoh. Did, did, did Pharaoh not end it? Pharaoh, 
So what y'all think? I think Pharaoh was toast. I think he went down with all the other soldiers and the horses and the char uh, chariots. Right. And he rushed down in there at the end also thinking it was okay because the ground was dry. They thought they all could get through and, and destroy the Israelites because God wanted them all to go in there so he could wipe them all out. So I think Pharaoh got wiped out with the rest right. of them. But didn't God want Pharaoh to understand that he was uh, he is God? Without a doubt. If he did, he can't he won't know it though. <laughs> hey, he knew that moment before he died. <laughs> um, we have no scriptural evidence that Pharaoh went in that water. So Whatever you think is probably the right answer. <laughs> when, if you think he went in, that's right. <laughs> you think he did go in, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <those> scriptural <laughs> So, uh, first of all, thank you, Reverend with your nice little blue suit on. Be sharp. <laughs> preacher suit on. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, leading us this far into our, our lesson this morning. Um, I heard, I, I, I sit, uh, just tried to listen um, to kind of the comments and I, it was an opportunity for me to just kind of you know, see and hear like what y'all been thinking. And um, so one of the things that jumped out at me, when you go back to um, I line number one, when it's talking about, so it says in verse 13, um, I mean, I'm sorry, verse 10, it says that when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto to the Lord. To the Lord. And the comments I was hearing is this natural reaction of fear, like it's just natural to be scared. Well, yes, it is. But that's why God let the children of Israel see what he did to the Egyptians before they were Egypt, right? So their natural reaction wouldn't be fear. God is trying to grow us up beyond fear. Anybody can be scared. God, God allowed the children of Israel to stay in Egypt for 430 years and the big bad boogeyman was the Egyptians. And in about nine months, he showed every Israelite that the boogeyman ain't the boogeyman no more. And if you ain't gonna be afraid of him in his house, why are you gonna be afraid of him out here? Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that the scripture says they were scared, but the scripture had already told us they were led by a pillar of cloud mm -hmm. by day. So they knew that was God right there leading them. But yet I am going to stop looking at God and look at somebody who's already been defeated. Oh, yeah. That's what Satan will do to us. Yes, it is scary when you're in an accident. Yes, it is scary when your child is uh, walking on the streets of Erie and and, and ain't got the proper clothing on. Yes, it's scary when your van is flipping upside down. Yes, it's scary when you hit a wall. Yes, it's scary, this thing called life. But that's why God proves to us over and over and over again, like, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And what I want your natural reaction to be is not be scared. Because I'm here. Now, if I wasn't here, be scared. Yeah, right. Be scared. Listen, um, when God has proven himself to us over and over, what he's looking for, he's looking for a different reaction. So I want us, I understand it's natural, but I want us that we need to understand we're not just natural beings. We are spiritual beings in a natural body. So our spirit man should jump up first. Yes, when I look and see them coming, Naturally, I can be scared. But the last time I saw them, they was kicking us out because they were scared of us. The last thing the Egyptians told the 
uh, Israelites before they left is that if y'all don't leave, we're all dead men. Mm -hmm. See, what our natural reaction should be is what, what God is trying to grow us up to is that our natural reaction is going, let's look at him. Right, right. What's God got in store? Mm. Let me, um, and I, I just want to use myself as an example simply because I know me better than I know you guys. Right. And so, um, and it's going to come out of the sermon today too, if the Lord let me push it that far. Amen. Um, so I'm laid up in a hospital bed. Yeah. With both my lungs full of blood. Mm. Keep in mind now, one blood clot can kill you. Mm -hmm. One. Matter of fact, my mother transitioned this life after being in a car accident because a blood clot left either from her knee that had gotten damaged or cracked ribs that got damaged, went to her heart, she had a massive heart attack. So I know what a blood clot can do. Sister Gibson, I'm laying in the bed talking to the doctors. I'm full of blood clots. But I ain't scared. My natural reaction, Joe, could have been, oh my God. My natural reaction could have been, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. But that was not my natural reaction. <laughs> because, watch this, it's not that I'm better than anybody else. I knew, and I'm, I can't wait to preach it today, I knew that either way, whatever happens, I still trust God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So watch this, watch this. If he heal me, I'll praise him. All right. All right. Come on. If he take me home, my mentality was in a few minutes I'll be in your presence, I'll praise you. Right. Right. Come on. Either way. But my natural reaction wasn't afraid. I ain't been scared yet. Come on. Come on. When they doctors sitting there looking me in my face trying to figure out, like we looking at the x-rays, we see your lungs are full of blood. But we're talking to you, and it looked like ain't nothing wrong with you. <laughs> they had to actually hold the x-rays in their hands to make sure they had the right patient. So they came in right before we were about to go into the procedure, and each team they had the doctor, the surgeon, had the anesthesiologist, had the nurses. Everybody want to come tell me what's about to happen. Mm. Well, Mr. McKenzie, I just want to make sure you understand this is about to happen. We're going to do this, 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 this. And my, my answer was, okay. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing come in, blah, 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 blah. okay. Mm -hmm. Next thing come in, blah, 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 blah. okay. Right. And I'm like, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Like, what we wait, let's right. do it. Right. 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 Because for me, I know that I already should have been dead. Right. Oh. Oh. Oh, it was a borrowed time anyway. I, I, I really, I wasn't no borrowed time. I already was delivered. All right. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. this was now Saturday. When it got really bad for me was Thursday. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, Sister Joe, I walked down from my bedroom down to the first flight, down the first flight of stairs to my dining room down the second flight of stairs to my den and down to the third flight into my basement where the washer was. I got in my house in my basement and wasn't sure I was going to be able to get out of my basement. Oh, wow. I had no strength. Couldn't catch my breath. I'm standing in front of my washer and I left my phone upstairs. And I'm trying to figure out like, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to get out of here. Well, watch this. That same Thursday, the Lord let me get out of the basement, get back to the dining room, get back to the bedroom. I went to the shower, put my clothes on, got in my car, drove to Albion. No, met three, had three meetings, met with the ministers, told them what was going on. Watch this, Brother Kevin. I actually had three meetings, got back in my car, drove back to Kalamazoo, got in my bed, slept all night, got up the next morning, went to my eye doctor's appointment, then went to the ER. And now they're looking at me like, I 
don't know. And I'm looking at them like, man, I've already been through the storm and the rain. God has already proved himself to me. I trust him more than I trust you. Whatever you tell me, it really don't matter what you tell me. You tell me whatever you tell me, I still trust God. My natural reaction. And I'm there, now remove me from it because I'm just a nobody. Your natural reaction. Think about how many times God has been good to you. Think about how many times when he made a way out of nowhere. Think about all the times he delivered you when you shouldn't have been delivered. And so what he's saying is, I've already delivered you so many times. The next time something happens, don't let your natural reaction be fear. Like, I got this. Because every time you fear... You were saying to God, I ain't sure if you can do it. Watch this. So he gets them, he gets, God gets everybody right where he wants them at. He gets the children of Israel to the sea. Because then they can't see how they're going to get across. Now they got to see him move on their behalf. He get the Egyptians to the sea and give them one last chance. Either you honor me or I'm going to kill you. He gets everybody to that spot where you got to make a choice. When Moses spread the rod and the east wind came, Moses made a choice. I obey God. When the children of Israel walked across the Red Sea, they made a choice. I obey God. But when the Egyptians pursued, they made a choice that I'm going to actually do with God's stuff what I want. Teaching point. Don't try to steal other people's blessings. Oh, okay, Pastor. Amen. What will bless somebody else will kill you. Oh, amen. Boy, oh boy. Hot words. Don't be hating on other people's God moments. Right, right. Because they decided I'm going to ride through that dry land because they're walking through dry land. But yet they have not given God glory. Amen. You have to know God for yourself and listen, be encouraged by other people's stuff, but don't try to hate for other people's stuff. Because the same sea that let the Israelites go was the same one that killed the Egyptians. <laughs> and God was simply saying, I will have glory. One way or the other. He used nine months. Think about it. Nine months. Now y'all feeling me? Every mom in the house ought to show up know this. And the dad is too. Especially if you wasn't trying to help you know, pregnant. Lord, have mercy. Pregnant is greatness. God used nine months to birth a nation. That would serve him. Wow. wow. My God. My That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I never saw that one coming. Wow. Wow. He used <laughs> nine months to show a nation mm -hmm. I'm God. I'm God. That's right. You cried for 430 years. Right. I can deliver you quickly Ooh. in nine months. Ah. Yeah. I see you. Now watch this. He also showed another nation, you have nine months to get it right. Because right now, ooh, if I can use this analogy and I don't want to be too graphic, you have nine months to stop abusing my daughter. You have nine months to stop raping and pillaging. You have nine months to recognize who she is. 
because the nation of Israel was considered a female. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Wow. And quite frankly, I'm going to say this, and I know it's going to get a reaction. So. Y'all know Jesus was married, right? Who was Jesus married to? The church. No, no. The church. Somebody say it. He was married to the church. He's married right now. We are the church. He's married to us. God the Father was married also. Who was he married to? Church. The world. Jesus married to the church. To the universe? No. Nope. Who did that? Because God the Father was married to the nation of Israel. Oh. Okay. Which is why when she went a whoring after other gods, he actually called it that, that she's cheated on me. He actually appointed the prophet Hosea. To go and marry a prostitute that represented how Israel treated him. And the Bible says Hosea loved this wife. And every chance she got, she left him and went out and slept with other men. And he kept going and ransoming her back because he loved her. So God was married to the nation of Israel. And what he was saying to Egypt, that is not only my daughter, that's my bride. You have nine months to stop abusing my wife. Wow. Wow. Uh -oh. That's the price of the mission right there. And when Pharaoh would not recognize the husband, because Pharaoh was taking turns when he shouldn't, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I got you, man. And when she left him, Pharaoh, he pursued her to bring her back so he could abuse her some more. And God said, I want to bring you to a point where you're going to know who the real husband of in this piece. Wow. And if you will stop your wicked ways and give me glory, I'm going to bring you to a point where I am going to deliver my wife and let her see me destroy you. Yes, that's, that's critical reading and critical thinking between the lines. You know what? Oh my God. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You had your hand up. When you said that, that, that brought back. That's deep thing. That's deep. Right. That just passed. Now, mind you, she had been, you might as well say, passing death so many times. And to other people that were scared, her kids didn't know that. She kept telling them, I'm not going to be here. She told me and my mother-in-law and kids one day, the last time she was in the hospital, she said, I see the light. Nobody would, would have never understood that in, the, in being in the spiritual realm, what she meant when she said, I see the light. I've seen it twice. She had almost, what's meant that now that she has passed over, it was, it, was, it was brought back to me, the Holy Spirit brought it back to my attention. She already knew she was. Here. But she was trying to get her children to come on one accord. Because when she kept telling them they saw the light, they were laughing, they were giggling, they were. But I see, I see it for myself because the Lord brought it to my children. Then when she told my mother in law, she said, I'm not going to be here, Mom. I'm not, I'm not going to be here for Christmas. And she didn't even make it to Thanksgiving. But that was her way of letting us know getting us ready, getting us prepared. I knew it in the spiritual realm, but the children didn't. They, they just kept, like, not listening to what they mama was saying. So, I knew it, and I could see it in her eyes. And when she was sitting in that hospital bed, the Holy Spirit revealed to me as we were walking out, she's not going to be here another year. So they better get it together. And they better come together on one court. And, 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 and I'll, I'll, I'll expand it. Um, and I wasn't there, but I'll expand it. Anytime God allows a saint to leave this earth, he's telling everybody, not just a family. He's telling everybody, me, you, everybody, get it together. Because this world, the, 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 the old, older saints used to sing it 
And the song would say, this world is not my home. Right. I'm just passing through. <laughs> this, we are pilgrims on a journey. Mm -hmm. This is not our home. And so sometimes we get so caught up and get the fussing and fighting and trying to uh, do all kinds of stuff here. This is not our home. And God is saying, I'm, I, will, I will actually literally pull one of my saints. So the rest of y'all see, you got to get it together. And if you got it together, you got to keep it together. And so it's, and know this, know this, God is so sovereign and so awesome that he uses death as an act of mercy for his people. Mercy. It is a, the Bible says, how beautiful is the death of a son. He uses death because death has no more victory anymore. It has no sting. It was the last enemy and it is now under the feet of Christ. So death can only aid a saint to get home. That's your ticket. It can't hurt you no more than that. It can only help you. Now those of us in our natural, we don't always look at it that way. We feel the loss and the pain and all of that. And what blows my mind, this blows my mind. I understand that if it's a loved one and, and you know, it's just that love piece. But we will have people who are so sick I mean, just oh, suffering. Miserable, miserable. Right. And we will have other family members just praying to God, please don't take them. Right. Okay. Like, for real? Like, they are suffering so bad. And you want to keep them here? They are not going to get better. And you, all you can see is how it's going to make me feel. Then, what really gets me or if they could just come back here one more time. Oh, for what? <laughs> for what? Because you don't get a chance to wish them back here on their most healthy day. If you wish them back here, you wish them back here however they wish them they left. And so, I can't, I just can't, I can't go on because they ain't here no more. And they were sick and suffering and tired. And you didn't do nothing for a while they were here. You <laughs> <laughs> made it worse. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We're going to get out of here. Uh, when my mother's mother was suffering and dying, mm -hmm. my mother was praying. Let's keep her here. Where all her siblings was praying for the Lord to take her. So her sister went to her, and they always called my mother baby sister, they call my name. He said, baby sister, you praying the wrong thing. We sitting there every day watching our mother suffer. Mm -hmm. And she always had been a God in a woman. Stop praying to be with his son. Mm -hmm. And pray to ask the Lord to take her home. So much. They said she ain't believing him because you keep praying to keep her here. Mm -hmm. So my mother said that day. She stopped saying, Lord, and asked him that day to let her go on. That very day she left. Mm -hmm. so Gave her permission to that leave. That went on. My mother has to talk to us. Not when you see someone suffer, not to pray for the Lord to leave. Let his will be. There you go. And that's the prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, we accept what you will allow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let your will be done. Yeah. And if this is his will to, to heal that person and keep him here, yeah. then let your will be done. Yeah. But if it's his will now to, especially if they say, yeah. to take home his, yeah. you gotta let him go. Yeah. You gotta let him go. Yeah. You gotta let him go. And what God is saying, you can let them go. He's telling them, you can come on. And he's telling you, you can let them go. Because I got them and I'm going to still be here for you. Yeah. Hey. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. That is a word for you. Wow. There's nobody like the God we serve. Nobody like the God we serve. Our time is up. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Well, you brought this message online. Well, Rip Simpson already warmed it up. So uh, I just hit a couple of little things. Great job. A couple of little things. Yeah. I feel I hate to see a picture. Great job. Great job. Yeah, good job.
I thought, Night candy. Yeah, yeah, bro, we don't, I thought about actually studying it, but I said, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, by way of announcements, and we'll hit it. Um, everybody uh, hopefully is aware of Sister uh, Johnette Ware, uh, the daughter of uh, Sister Mary Francis Sanders, uh, transitioned his life, and that service will be here at the Macedonian Church. Uh, the viewing uh, will be this coming Friday, Friday at, from 7 to 8. And uh, all leaders that can, um, they, uh, the funeral home need the church open at 4 p.m. All right. And then the service, the actual service is the following day, the 23rd, Saturday at noon. And that'll be right here. Uh, I believe Pastor Larry, uh, Reverend Larry Gamble. I don't know him personally, but I think he's the one who's officiating. And so, um, um, if we can, uh, let's be here to support that family. I may or may not be here because that particular day I got a schedule conflict uh, already once that happens. So, and, uh, we will do the very, very best we can. All right? All right. Let's just uh, make sure you guys know. Yes? The viewing for uh, my great uh, my brother Wilson. Friday in Jackson at uh, the funeral home. Uh, um, Salt Montgomery. Montgomery. Yep. And then uh, the, uh, the viewing is at 11, and then the funeral is at 12. Yep. And also, uh, and I, I, I can tell you now, I won't be able to make that one because I'll be at a service in Kalamazoo. Uh, young man, you probably heard him all the time. I don't know if Alex Johnson. Knew this kid growing up since he was, he's like a year older than Jeffrey. So, uh, knew it from a kid. Um, he was uh, shot and killed on um, Monday or Tuesday, something like that. But that service will be this Friday uh, at Mount Zion at, I believe, at 11 o'clock. And so, uh, more than likely, I will be at that service. So, we got a lot going on. But let me hurry up and tell somebody. You can still be thankful. Amen. This is not a heavy day. This is still the Lord's day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad and will magnify the Lord with me. Let us stand and be dismissed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for another expression of your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us in the lesson, God, that you are still in charge, that we can trust you in the midst of natural fears. We can still trust you. When it looks bad for us, we can still trust you because you led the nation of Israel by day and by night and you just telling us by, by way of lesson, you only lead us twice to also by day and by night. We thank you right now that you and you alone get the glory out of all that goes on in this world from your people. And we committed, Lord, to make sure that we don't take our eyes off you, but that we do give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we thank you for the food that has been prepared. We pray that the fellowship and the food is to your glory and to your liking, that it will strengthen our bodies so that at 11 a.m. we'll be ready to come back into the sanctuary to lift up your holy son's name. We thank you for souls being saved, lives being changed, and needs being met. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.